In this video we're going to look at integer operations and using the one styles. So um, within this uh, little video we'll show you how we should introduce the one styles, zero pairs, look at some addition and subtraction and some multiplication and division questions with the use of the one styles. So what I'm going to do is just going to switch screens now onto the manipulatives app. So if we open that up um, the function we're looking for is the algebra tiles, so we'll open that up. Um, as we go through this video, I'll show you some of the um, components around the screen and what the different functions do, um, but obviously it's probably best to play about with that yourself in your own time so that you can get uh, familiar with the different things that are available. So, um, introducing the ones tiles, so we can do this obviously via this app, or we could do it with the physical um, algebra tiles that we have in school. Um, pupils could use the app um, in the classroom, on their iPad or at home. Um, the tiles could be used in class as well. From a teacher point of view, of course, we could use the app. Um, if we had an Apple TV, we could, of course, link up to the board. Um, but without that, um, the maths bot website also has a manipulatives a tool that you can use which has the similar to a uh, sorry similar tiles to these ones and it works in a really similar way as well so um, if you didn't if you weren't able to use the apple tv with pupils in the classroom you could use the maths bot app and they could use this manipulatives app and it wouldn't be a problem it would look fairly similar to this so we've got our working screen in the middle. The tiles are down the left hand side. Um, so we're going to have a little look at the ones tile. So we've got a positive one tile and a negative one tile. Um, same colours as the, the physical tiles that we have as well. So yellow on one side, red on the other. You can um, choose to remove the labels if you want um, by clicking that button there. Or you can put them back again, which is quite useful to have. So you can have them in if, if you prefer. Um, so we just want to get used to using those ones tiles. We want to show that we could um, uh, show a group, for instance, of positive five. So we can do that by dragging down five tiles and sit them next to each other. Or you can also just click the one tile and it'll just keep generating another tile next to the one before. Similarly with groups of negatives, if I wanted to show um, negative three, then again I could just drag down or click three negatives. So allowing people just to play about with it and understanding that that is five ones and negative three um, just so they get to grips with that. So that's just introducing the ones tiles. Once you've um, done what you need to do for a particular question, you can clear your screen using the clear button at the bottom left. So we can do that now. And then it goes back to the start, nice blank screen. So what we'll have a little look at now are zero pairs. So you may have already done some integer work with your class. Um, so obviously just pitch this as you like. Um, on this app here we can show a zero pair of course there's a one next to a minus one. Um, so I may as well just mention actually at the time I'm using the pens down the bottom. They work really similar to the smart board so if you pick up a pen and you write with it um, if you wanted to go and do something else like I was trying to drag that tile over there forgetting that I had the pen on so you would have to replace the pen or the razor or whatever tool first, make sure they're all there in the wee homes, and then you should be able to go back and do what you need to do. So that was a good uh, place to do that there. So one and minus one, of course, gives us a zero pair. So we can show that um, uh, visually here with them sitting next to each other. And then if we were looking to do a calculation where we had some zero pairs to um, match up and get rid of, we can in fact get rid of them from the screen just by putting one on top of the other. So if we move the one or the minus one on top of the other one, it'll disappear, which is quite nice, so that when they're dealing with a problem, they can actually physically get them to disappear and make them zero. So again, it might be quite good just to play around with some um, zero pairs and just getting them to see how that function works, which is quite good. Um, and you can just move them around to suit yourself. Oops, there we go. So that's zero pairs. Um, 
So let's move on to some addition and subtraction questions just to show how you would go about showing those with the tiles. Um, so I've got this blank screen here and um, down the bottom right corner you can see a capital T. So that's just a text box. So if you wanted to add in like typed questions you could do that. Uh, next in from the right hand side, uh, this little kind of levels, that's just going to allow you to split your screen. So I'll show you that just now so you can uh, see what that looks like. And I'm going to do three examples with you. So I'll split the screen into three. Uh, down the bottom, in the middle of the screen, you can see an eye. If we click off the eye, it takes away that box. If you put it back, all that does is it just um, it just uh, simplifies the expression that you've got on the screen. Uh, really, that's what that little button does. So I'm just going to get rid of it from now because it does only deal with one example per screen, whereas I'm going to do three different examples just now. So I'll have a look at these three with you just to show you um, how to set these out um, with the tiles for the pupils. Okay, so when you're working with the tiles, obviously, you know, just in terms of like time and um, if, especially with the physical tiles, keep the numbers quite small so that you're not um, taking forever to, you know, do the questions. When people's become um, aware of the rules, um, of negative integers then or the operations I should say then they could we could start introducing bigger numbers and decimals and things if you wanted to um so we've got positive four so I'm going to show that with four um ones and then we've got plus or add in so we're adding into that negative three tiles so add into that negative three tiles and I've shown that there Oh, sorry, here we go again, the pain. Okay, so from there, prior to um, finalising our answer, of course we're looking for zero pairs. So we can do that little function that I showed you where you can um, match them up, leaving your answer there as positive one tiles. Similarly with uh, the second example, so I'm going to start off with negative five this time. And I'm going to introduce to that positive seven. So I'm going to then introduce seven positive tiles. From there, I'm going to then pair up these zero pairs I can see. And that leaves me with positive two. And then the last one, so I'm starting off with negative three, and I'm going to add into that another negative four. So this time, I've got four more negatives. So this time, I can't pair any up. I've not got any zero pairs, not got pluses and minuses, so I'm quite literally just totalling up what I've got there which gives me minus or negative seven. So that's how we would use the tiles for addition. It's fairly self-explanatory. Um, I'll show you now um, how we would use the tiles for subtraction. So again, I'll do some examples with you just to show you Oops, how we would go about doing that. So four different really basic examples again, just so that we've got a nice mixture of maybe the different types of problem that we could encounter with pupils and how we would go about showing them with the tiles. Okay, so the first one, we're looking to start off with positive three. Now this time, I'm not adding into this little system like I was before. I'm looking to subtract five from this. So rather than thinking about it as a subtraction, it might be easier to actually think about it as an addition. So I'm thinking about this as three add negative five. So I'm going to introduce negative five to the little system and then I'm going to look to tidy this up essentially to see what my answer would be. So I've got positive 3, I've got negative 5, I've got three sets of zero pairs. So I'm going to pair those up and that leaves me with negative 2. Okay, next one. So I've got negative 4. And again, I can't subtract 8 from that, so I'm going to um, think about it as an addition. And I'm going to um, add in another negative 8 tiles. Okay, so then I'm just saying, right, well, I don't have any zero pairs, so my final answer would simply be negative 12. 
Okay, third example. So again, I'm going to start off with positive three. Oops. This time, I'm taking away negative five. So this time, I'm going to show this slightly differently. So if I want to take away negative five, I can't, there's not a negative five there for me to take away. So I'm going to introduce it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce it as a zero pair. And now, from this system, I've now got negative five that I could get rid of. So if I get rid of that negative five, because I want to take away negative five. So if I take away negative five, I'm getting rid of all those negative one tiles. So you can do that one at a time just by holding your finger on top of the tile and you'll see there a little um, selection appears. So you can click on the cross, that'll get rid of it one at a time. Or you can simply drag from the top left to the bottom right corner and then click the little red X and that gets rid of all at the same time. And then we can see that if we collect those together, left over then for the answer, would be positive 8. Okay, similar uh, double negative example for the last one. So we'll start off this time with negative 2. I want to subtract negative 4. So I'll add in negative 4 to the little system, but I'm going to add in, remember, as a zero pair. So then I can get rid of that negative 4. And then I can see what I'm left with. So now I'm looking to tidy this up of course. Um, this time I have got some zero pairs as well so I'll get rid of those zero pairs and I can see that left over I've got positive two. So in summary then, um, so just to be aware when we're going over this with pupils, um, in summary if we're subtracting a negative we need to introduce it as a zero pair. So we didn't have to do that with the first two, we treated them as an equivalent addition a calculation but if we've got the double negative we've got to introduce the zero pair to that okay so that is um, addition and subtraction so now what we'll do is have a little look at multiplication so multiplication what we're going to do is we're going to think about multiplication as the area of a rectangle so um, the reason that we do this is that when we are factoring um, or factorizing we want to think about the area of a rectangle. So if we think about a, a multiplication here, so I've got 2 times 5, 2 represents the number of rows that we're going to have in our rectangle array, and 5 is the number of columns that we're going to have, and that is true um, throughout the videos and throughout the sort of algebra uh, use of the tiles. So if I wanted to show this, I would show 2 rows, of five so i'm going to then introduce five tiles in each row oops um so there we go so we've got a, a little array made up of two rows of five and the total here would be the area of that rectangle so the area of that rectangle would be then 10 units so that is two by five so now what we'll do is we'll have a little look at that with some negative uh, integers so negative three times i'm going to do five but let's do four just to make it interesting so remember the first number here is the number of rows and in fact do you know what i'm going to do i'm just going to switch this round to just give a kind of a better example for the first one and then what i'll do is i'll make the second one where the first number is a negative. So this one is, we've got three rows. So we've got three rows of negative four. Okay, so we're going to have three rows, two, three, and in each row we're going to have negative four. So the first number, remember, is always your rows. So we've got three rows of negative four. Okay. So we can see there that the final answer, 3 times negative 4, would of course be negative 12. Okay, so next one. So this time we're going to switch around and we're going to make the negative number the one that's uh, in the first position, in the row position. So we'll change this now to um, negative 3 times 5. Okay, so remember this is the number of rows. Okay, now we can't have 
negative three rows. So what we're going to do is we're going to have just three rows. So we're going to have three rows of five. So we're going to have three rows of five. Okay. Um, now, of course, the question wasn't three rows of five. It was negative three rows of five. So when we've got that situation, we're going to have to flip the tiles over. Okay. So when we flip the tiles over, um, we want to flip them all over. So we're going to drag again from the top corner down to the bottom corner. And this just gets it done a bit quicker. And the middle um, little circles are plus minus. If we click that, that flips all the tiles over. So in fact, the final answer is going to be negative 15. Okay, all right, so last example then. So this time we're going to have a little look at the double negative. So six, sorry, negative six times negative two. So remember, we're talking the first one is always the rows, but we can't have negative six rows. So unfortunately, we're just going to have to have six rows of negative two and then we'll do a little correction. So six rows of negative two. So we're going to have two, three, four, five, six and then <coughs> negative two in each row sorry okay so we've got six rows of negative two but it wasn't six rows of negative two it was negative six rows of negative two so again we have to flip over those tiles so when we're flipping them over we want to flip everything so we can draw that box round flip them over and then our final answer becomes positive 12. Okay. All right, so lastly, what we'll do is we'll have a little look at some division. Okay, so again, we want to think about um, these sort of arrays as such and groupings. So we're going to think about... Um, the first number in a division, so let's think about 8 divided by 4. The first number in the division is always the total, of course. And the second number in this division is how many groups we're going to have. Right, so we're going to take positive 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yep. <laughs> and we're going to make four groups, okay? So from there, we're going to make four groups. And we want them, of course, to be the same size of equal measure. So we can see we've got four groups there, and then in each group we've got two. So that's how we would show that there with positive integers. Um, let's have a little look now at minus 12 divided by, let's go for three. So we're going to start off with, oops, this time, sorry, minus 12. So we're going to start off with minus 12, so that's our total. 12. And we're going to make three groups. So we're going to now create three equal groups. Of tiles. And we can see that in each group there are four negative tiles. So that's quite easy to understand, I think. Okay. Right, so let's clear that away. All right, so now let's have that negative integer in the second position, the divisor. So we're going to start off with 10 positive tiles. And we want to divide that into five groups. But actually, it's negative five groups. We can't make negative five groups. So we're going to just make five groups. So five equal groups. And then to account for the fact that it was negative five groups, we're going to flip those tiles over. So we can see that in each group, we've got negative two. Okay, and then last one, we'll have a little look at the double negative. So we're going to do minus 15 divided by minus five. So remember, that's our total. That's our groups. Okay, so we're going to start off with negative 15. I've just lost count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There we go. Sorry. And we're going to split that into five groups. So we can't do negative five groups. We can only do five groups. So we'll split that into five groups. So we've got five equal groups. 
Okay, oops, sorry. So five equal groups. But we didn't want five equal groups, we want negative five groups. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip those tiles around to account for that negative five. So we end up with positive three. So we've got positive three in each group. Okay, so that, I don't know if that was too fast, if it was too, you know, sort of e easy, self-explanatory. Um, but hopefully, if there was any questions that you might have had, I've covered them. If not, you can always feel free to ask. Um, and you can rewind the video at any point, of course, and have a little play by yourself. Thanks for listening.